everyone. Welcome to episode 22 of the Little Unstoppable Podcast. I am Sarah, your hostess, um, otherwise known as Love Sockwool on the Ravelries Instagram. And yeah, that's pretty much the main places you can find me. I hope you are having a nice morning or evening or afternoon, wherever you are in the world. It is December 8th. And it is a cloudy December day here in St. Paul, Minnesota. (laughs) We're having an El Nino winter, apparently. So all the snow that we got over, was it Thanksgiving? It snowed Thanksgiving day here. Um, And then I think the following weekend, we got like six or seven inches of snow. It's all gone. It's all gone. We might have a brown Christmas, which is fine. It's completely fine. Um, If you... We're celebrating Thanksgiving. I hope you had a nice day. We had a very nice day. We got up bright and early, Ben and I did, and drove down to downtown St. Paul and ran in the turkey trot, which I've never done before. I'm not a huge fan of the running really early in the morning scene, but I knew I would feel better about all the eating I was going to be doing if we went and did the turkey trot, so we did. (laughs) And it was really fun. We ran with a group of, friends and mutual friends um, uh, in downtown St. Paul. And it was sleeting and snowing and raining, like all at the same time. It was quite cold, but it was really fun. And I think about 6,000 people turned up to do that. And people were wearing the funniest hats, like full on turkey hats, like with Christmas lights strung around them. And they were running in that. I really wanted one really bad, (laughs) but it was fun to see. Um, people wearing crazy hats and running in the snow. So that was enjoyable and it was actually actually the highlight of the day and then we went to my brother and sister-in-law's house for Thanksgiving dinner. Um, I actually made turkey and my sister-in-law made everything else and it was everything was delicious. I just I baked the turkey on Wednesday and then carved it all up and put it in a like a roasting pan and bits of the pre-gravy on top of it and then I made the gravy later um, on Thursday. It was delicious but there was not enough leftovers in my opinion. Well because I I separated everything out to give to my my mother and father-in-law and my brother and sister-in-law but then we didn't have enough leftovers. I need to make another turkey so that I can have more leftovers and the sweet potato casserole was delicious. It was so good but there was an appalling lack of marshmallows. So I might have to remake the sweet potato casserole in a turkey just so that I can feel like I fully celebrated Thanksgiving. Do you know what I mean? I hope someone out there knows what I mean. (laughs) Um, I have many socks to show you. That might be the bulk of what I have to show you. I have all kinds of stuff laid out. I have quilts to show you. Um, cozy memories, and that might be the bulk of it. And I will try to get through it all in a reasonable pace. If for some reason this video just cuts off suddenly and there's no goodbye or whatever, it means that I ran out of storage and I do not have time to re record anymore. So if this podcast just ends abruptly, just know that Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, and I'll see you the next time I record. So um, hopefully that won't happen, but we'll see. Um, Yeah, let's get into some socks. I have one finished, actually I've had two finished objects because I knit a little hat, the little scallops hat for my friend's little boy um, who we are also making a prayer quilt for, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, It turned out so cute. I posted a picture on Instagram. So that little boy is um, little Jeremiah and the hat completely fit him. I was so worried that it would be way too big um, because my sense of scale with knitting smaller children hats is complete. It's just gone. Um, Even when I'm trying to knit, I'm pointing over here there because Juliet's over there watching Peppa Pig. Um, You know, I can be knitting a hat for her and be looking at thinking, this is enormous. And then you put it on and it completely fits. Or conversely, it'll look teeny tiny and I'll think there's no way this is going to fit. And and it completely fits. So my sense of scale is not reliable. 
Um, but it fit, and I'm so, so thankful. I dug up some deep stash sport weight that I had from a long, long time ago and, and just knit up a cute little scallops hat. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just go to Ravelry and under the hat tab, under the patterns, um, the little scallops hat is, is in, it's in the top 100. I don't know if it's in the top 25, but it might be in the top 100, but it's very easy. It just links you to a blog post and it's a very simple um, pattern. It's very nice. I'm sure I'll probably, I, I would like to make one for Juliet. It's really cute and it's easy to make if, if you only have small amounts of like one color because you can do the brim scallop part in one color and the rest in, in another color. So anyway. Um, okay, so I have one Christmas sock done <laughs> to show you. This is the Cascade Heritage Prince in the holidays colorway. I um, worked on this on Thanksgiving Day and I, I think I finished it on Thanksgiving. Maybe not. I maybe finished it the next day. Um, so yeah, I still have not cast on any of the second Christmas socks. This is the only, I only had, I have two Christmas socks finished. They just don't match each other. So I could wear them together, I guess. But, um, but yeah, I, I've been distracted with, I got distracted by the hat and, and then um, I realized, I think last weekend, that Ben does not have a pair of socks for Christmas because I gave Brian the pair I was gonna give Ben, which is fine. I'm glad I was able to do that. But um, I really had wanted to give Ben some crazy Zauber ball socks. So um, this one I had started and I think I was at like maybe here and so la I think it was last Sunday, I just had a hankering to knit with Crazy's Hour Bottle again. So I pulled it out of the drawer, drawer, I had stuffed it in and finished the leg. And I think I maybe even got most of the heel flap done. And then the next day finished out the decreases and strength out the foot. Um, this is 68 stitches on a US one. And yeah, it's it's funny to me how, for me, I always cast on 64 stitches. For Ben, I cast on 68 stitches, which is only a four stitch difference, but this just seems like huge to me. And then after the gusset decreases, for me, I always knit 50 and then do a toe. For Ben, I knit 60 and then do a toe. It's only 10 extra rounds. But it's enormous! It's just amazing that how much only four stitches and ten rounds makes. So then, immediately cast on the second one. And boy, do they look different. Isn't that, that's, that is the charm of Crazy Zauber Ball. You do not know what you're going to get, which is fine. I love that. I love these natural gray taupe colors. So I am working down the foot. I'm done with the decreases. Hallelujah! Once you get that done, you're done. The sock is done. Once you get that second set of decreases done, you're golden. So it looks like Ben's gonna get his Christmas socks after all. I was concerned that it was not going to happen. I do have the sock head hat, the woolen vine, dirty on purpose. I have that for him and I was gonna be content with like, he's just gonna get a sock head hat this year, but no, he will get his socks. And I'm very excited because now all of them, my children, my children and my husband will get a pair of socks. So I don't have to break my long-standing record <laughs> of Christmas sock gift knitting. Okay, so then this weekend I was able to crank out Juliet's pair. So this was supposed to be the Summer of Socks that Sweet Seashore Sharon posted um, in our group back in June where we were all supposed to knit, you know, a summer themed sock. So I did this and I, I knit the, the first one and then had gotten the second one going but then you know what I do I just put it down and didn't finish it um so which is fine but I finished it I, I picked up the second one and finished the second one in like a day so and it's a toddler size sock so it's pretty easy to do so this is white birch fiber arts Melonius and yeah I think I cast on 52 stitches. They seem fat to me. I hope they're not too big for her. But I, I guess it's good if they are too big because then obviously there's growing room. So I'm happy that I have, I have every, except 
for needing to just finish this. I, I'll have everybody's Christmas socks done. And then that's that's the only Christmas knitting I'm attempting. My mom's birthday is Saturday. So I have a pair of socks I'm sending her that she does not know about. You better not be watching, mother. If you are, stop it. And you'll have to watch this episode after your birthday. Here is the yarn, Melania. And I'm sorry, I did not tell you what this was. This is um, uh, Crazy Sour Ball. I think it's called Chocoladen Saita or something like that. My Sweet Side or something like that. I think I got it. I got it from Love Knitting. Yes, that is correct. Speaking of Love Knitting, which I love. <laughs> but I ordered the beautiful Opal Advent Calendar Cube from them and it has been two weeks. It's been over two weeks since I ordered it and it still has not come. And it's killing me seeing everybody's cute little tiny opal mini skeins on Instagram. And um, and in our group, um, we're, we're doing like a sock advent along with our cozy memories. Blake is putting, you know, one square a day. So a lot of people have the opal advent calendar. I'm so jealous. I can't wait for mine to come. I keep stalking the mailman. If I, I'll probably see him going by while I'm recording this. I don't think it's gonna come. I think it's gonna be late because now that we're into December, the you know the post is just lower and it's probably hung up in customs because it's this big cube and they're looking at it like, what in the world is in here? You know, it's stuck in there. Why have we not infiltrated our customs offices, people? We need knitters in the customs offices to expedite these packages. Clearly they are not a security threat to our country. It's yarn, it's wool. You can't even strangle somebody with it. If you did, it would just snap because it's a natural fiber will come right across. If it's acrylic, that is a threat to national security because you could strangle somebody with it because it won't snap because it's made of petroleum. So, okay, end of rant. We need knitters in our customs offices. How can we make this happen? Who need molds? We need to get them in there. This is something that we need to work on for 2016 because we're sitting here waiting for our packages from the UK and they're not coming. <sighs> all right, that's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> Let's see, what else can I show? I'll show you one other Christmas sock. I didn't work anymore on the pop music one. I really want to, but I just, I got distracted with all the other things. I did start the leg on um, my Vaughn Vines Deck the Halls and I just decided to do plain vanilla. It's so beautiful. I love this colorway. So yeah, that's it on my Christmas socks. Are you guys having fun knitting your Christmas socks? I I'm so happy that everyone is so rabid and feral about Christmas sock knitting. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> oh, I do have another finished sock. This is one, it's not a pair. I finished my Molly sock, the birthday cake. Um, it's so pretty. And I did go ahead and soak it because I just I just wanted it to look, to look nice. So it smells nice. I soaked it in some tuft ones. I can't remember which scent it was. I have two bars of tuft ones. One is mossy woods and the other is I don't know what the other one is. And honestly, now they both smell the same because I have both of, this, of the bars of soap in my kitchen in this little skinny drawer that I pull out. And every time I open it, it's just like, oh, the smell of amazingness comes out. And I can't decipher which one is which. And I don't have the labels anymore. I just have them in little Ziploc bags to keep them protected. So I'm not sure which scent this one is. But anyway, this was a delightful sock to knit. And here is the second ball. And this is the Olfen base, which looks like Molly is going to keep in her shop. So that's a good thing. Um, so yeah, I, I hope I can get the second one going. I, I'm not sure when I'll get it casted on because I really do want to get back to my, my Christmas socks. All right. There are more socks. Yes, there are. So I had put in an order, I think it was Saturday after um thanksgiving gnome acres um did an update on the saturday after thanksgiving and she had a coupon code and i have always wanted this no place like gnome colorway it's just so fun and colorful 
and special. So I grabbed a skein of that in the house gnome base. I, I just grabbed one skein of it, but she so kindly turned it into a doppelganger set for me. Amanda, thank you so much for that. That really, I was so touched and so appreciative. And look how pretty they look together. I think this is called I'm a Peacock. <laughs> so you get 300 extra yards of a contrast color. So I think I'm ready for the heel flap. So I could go ahead and put in a contrast heel flap, or I may save this and do mittens or, or you know, something separate. Um, so I think I, I actually will keep the sock I'm knitting just, just the No Place Like Gnome, and, and then I'll save this for, for something else. Oh, look at that. My stitch marker came off. This is the, the little um, baseball mitt one. For some reason, it's really loud. <laughs> That's the one I had to take it off my other project because it was so loud. I don't think I got to show you guys this one. This one's a seahorse. I really love the seahorse. And it's fun to have the little jingle bell on it. So this um, sock is the Wendelin sock. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. I think it's, I don't think it's a PDF. I think it's just a, like a blog post link. But it's very simple. All I mean, all it is, is it's free is um, just ribbing that goes down either side of the um, of the leg. And it's, it's a great one. It's a good one to have in your sock knitting arsenal because it's like a blend of stockinette and ribbing, which is nice. You did? Oh good, I'm so glad. So yeah, I'm ready for the heel flap, but then I, of course, got distracted by I'll try and put it down. <laughs> get back to it. It's the fun of having so many projects going is that you get to pick and choose what you feel like working on. So, the last time I recorded, my Knit Picks package came right as I was recording. <laughs> so I'll show you some Felici that came in that package. Um, hold on. Ink on the wall. What is that? Oh, okay, that's a too many projects, too many little strings of yarn. Okay, so this one, I think I Instagrammed this one. This is Tea Party. There we go. It's such a sweet colorway. I love it. And I, I got some Tranquil Stroll as a contrast. I don't have to do that, I just did it for fun. But it's such a sweet, girly colorway. This is just sock number one. I don't even think I'm done with the decreases yet. I just pick it up and then, you know, get on it when I feel like it. Okay, I think that is that. Looking around feverishly. What's in here? That may be everything. Yeah, I think I think that's all the socks I can show you. Um, I I have been working here and there on my cozy memories blanket, and I love the idea that um one of our revelers, is it in our group? Is it Bungalow 312, 316? I can't remember your numbers. I think it was her idea um, to do the sock advent along the sock blankets, you know, knit a square on your blanket every day leading up to Christmas. What a beautiful idea. I love this so much. <sighs> I'm already like five squares behind, <laughs> but that's okay. <clears throat> maybe, maybe today. No, I have too much to do today. We're, we're prayer quilting tonight at my mother-in-law's, which is really great. I think about four of us are getting together. We're, we're, these are the prayer quilts right here. I can show you them in a minute, but we have to get them finished. The one is done, but the other one we still have to make nine more squares. So we, we have to, I have to make that a huge priority this week and next week to get them done. Because I really want them done and, and gifted to their recipients before Christmas. Okay, I'm trying to find where I was working on it. Okay. Since the last we spoke, I put on deck the halls because I had wound up my woolen vine. And then uh, Hedgehog Fibers Teacup. And then this is Regia um, Misty, I think it's called. I made a pair of socks. That, these are Marshall's Christmas socks. And, um, and I actually completely ran out of that cardway. And, but I managed to have a mini of it because when Molly and I did a swap, 
ages ago, she sent me a little mini says, yay, I was still able to um, put a square in my blanket because otherwise I would not be able to because I completely ran out. So yes, so that complete, this square completed this row. So I'm ready to start a new row. And it just kills me that my opal advent calendar isn't here. Ah! Um, but that, you know, that's okay. I did pull out, hold on a second, I'm leaning over. Um, I pulled out one of my smaller little Christmas bags and I did fill it up with a bunch of like kind of Christmassy ish minis. I don't have like all 24 in here, but I have enough that hopefully, by the if I can work through these, hopefully by the time I work through these, that opal calendar will be here. But it's okay. It's not. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> but as you can tell, I, I am anxious to get it. <laughs> so yes, I, I love, love the cozy memories, always. All right, I think I will show you a little stash enhancement. Um, So in my Knit Picks, I also order, I've got some of the speckled Hawthorne. I think this is, I think it's called confetti, yeah. I still don't know what I'm gonna do with this. I, I was thinking mittens, maybe a sock head hat. I don't think I want to do socks because I've, I've actually knit, tried to knit a sock with Hawthorne before and I, I really didn't like it. Not because I didn't like the color, but I just, I didn't like the feel of the yarn knit at that gauge. So I think it just needs to be a hat or mittens. We'll see. And I, do, I have another skein of Christmas sock yarn. This is the one I was telling you about, the Andy Pandy Crafts. And this came the day that, last day I podcasted as well, it's called Oh Christmas Tree. See how it's like, it's green, but then it's gonna swirl with the, the speckly part, it's so neat. I can't believe I haven't cast this on, but um, I don't have a ball winder right now, and so all my skeins I have to wind up by hand, so sometimes it gives me pause before I <laughs> recklessly cast on more, because I'm like, oh, I have to wind up the yarn, and I'm too tired to wind up the yarn, so I haven't done it yet, but I would like to. And it is very fun. She's on Etsy, and her name is Andrea. Andy Pandy Crafts. So you can, you just, you know, the easiest way to get to Etsy is just go to Google and, and Google people's names and then it finds the, finds the shop for you. I've always had trouble with searching within Etsy. Like if you type in it in Etsy, like it doesn't even come up. Or often it doesn't come up. Um, excuse me, I have a text message. Christmas packages. This is Amazon. Okay. It's not it, it's not it. So it is winter now, and the winter is always a good time to knit Misty Alpaca. It is the most glorious stuff in the world. It is um, alpaca, merino wool, silk, and nylon. And I've, this is called Tilt-A-Whirl, and I've always wanted this colorway. I love the, the shades of like reds and purples. And I think I'm gonna do a sock head hat with this. I had thought I would do socks, but no, I, I really want this on my my head. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna do that. But again, I haven't wound it up, so I've not done that yet. I think that's it for stuff. There, I did have more in my Knit Picks order. I got some more Felici candy bar, something like that. But it's it's over in the corner. Um, you can look at it on the website if you wanna see what it looks like. I think it's called candy, no, candy jar. That's what it was, that's what it is. Maybe I can show that next time. All right, would you like to see some quilts? We have been enjoying snuggling with our Christmas quilt. <laughs> um, I'm making another one. Oh yes, one is not enough. I am making two. And since I'm consoling myself with a Christmas Advent quilt, since I don't have my opal Advent calendar, so I'm trying to, um, stitch up one block a day and I the first day I started I, I knit I knit several I sewed several so that for December 1st like I could just do one a day and it should be done the, the cool top would be done by Christmas I have to do 30 I have 13 of them done so this 
uh, log cabin style is the fabric is postcards for Santa and it's a jelly roll that I got from Zuri Star Quilt Co. And I'm using two different fabric collection. This one is my favorite. So it's postcards for Santa so a lot of the um, fabric looks like a postcard which is really fun. So I'm doing a mixture of log cabins from the Quilt As You Go Made Modern book. There's another text. Who this time? Oh, Tracy. Okay. Hold on, Tracy. I'll get back to you in a second. I think they're all going to the Mall of America today. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I can't go. All right. So this is the other fabric collection, and it's the tinsel um, by Cotton and Steel. And the word tinsel is not in the fabric. This is actually the selvage, but I started the log cabin with the word, the name of the fabric collection from the selvage because I just love it. I think it looks kind of cute. It's such a sweet fabric collection. I love it. these trees. And the little glasses. <laughs> Very festive and I love the washi tape. So fun. And then I'm doing a bunch of diagonal solstice parade ones. So I'm gonna line the outside of the fat of the quilt with solstice parade and then the inside is gonna be all the log cabins. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So yeah. So fun! And it's, it is quite easy to just do one a day because honestly it doesn't take very long at all. It maybe takes 20 minutes to do a block. Um, so it's very satisfying. So I haven't done my block for today, so I'm gonna have to, maybe I can do that after. Or while this is uploading, maybe I can get that done. We'll see. And then um, someone had asked on Instagram, like how do you attach the blocks? Like to sew it into a quilt top. You do it the exact same way you would traditional blocks. You just put your right sides together, sew a quarter, quarter inch seam allowance, open it up, grab the next block, right sides together, do a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down, and then that's just how you do it. The only difference is, is that the, the batting is already on the back of all your fabric. And then when you're done, when you're, all your squares are sewn together, you uh, prep your backing fabric, whatever you want to do for your backing. And um, now what I did with this quilt, which I showed last time, I didn't do a binding. I just took my backing fabric and my sewn quilt top and just did right sides together, sewed all the way around the perimeter, leaving, you know, this, you know, maybe this much space on one of the edges so I could flip it right side out and then did a top stitch all the way around the edge. It's kind of like a pillowcase. Um, so that's what that's my quick and dirty finish <laughs> for my quilts if I'm too lazy or don't have enough time to do a proper binding. Um, it works out fine. And then what you do is you just go back in and you just sew, stitch in the ditch along your your um along your rows you just do grid lines to attach so the backing when you look at the just the back there's just grid lines i don't know if you can see that but it's so easy it is so easy i cannot recommend this book enough <laughs> it is so fantastic and so fun um and very relaxing very low stress okay so this adorable and cute um so we also are doing log cabins and solstice parade for him and we're doing like 25 blocks so it'll be a little bit smaller but it's for a sweet little boy love these sloths <laughs> so yeah and then we also have lots of solstice parade and we had um, some leftover fabric from Jenna's quilt. So we threw um, some of them in as well, which is very special. And I, I know Jenna will love that. <laughs> she loves Jeremiah too. Love these horses. So maybe tonight at our quilting night, 
um, we can get this quilt top sewn together. I have the backing fabric in the wash right now. I actually have to go down and get that in the dryer because I need to prep it because I, I bought yardage but I have to like then cut it to then make it the right, the right width and all that stuff. So that is that. Let me just get a little organized here. And then we've got the Ballard quilt which I'm using all Downton Abbey, the Egyptian collection. This is for a man, so I think it, it um, it's, not, it's, I think this is a nice collection for, I mean, it'd be fine for a woman too, but, um, I think it'll be nice for, for Mr. Ben, because I think he will appreciate it. And we're making this a nice big size. It's, um, 12 inch finished blocks. And we're doing all 30 of them. So it'll be even bigger than my Christmas quilt. Because I did the Ballard quilt as well for my Christmas quilt. And then I did all of the Delton Abbey fabric for the borders. So yes, we're getting there. I think we have to do nine more and then we'll be done. So hopefully we can crank them out tonight. Girls, we got to do it. We got to finish these prayer quilts. <laughs> Get them out to their recipients before Christmas. Okay. I am done boring you all to death <laughs> so I hope you have a lovely Advent season hope you have a lovely Christmas and New Year's I realistically will probably not be able to podcast before Christmas because I, there's just no way I don't think there's gonna be any way there's gonna be too much going on um so I'll probably have to wait till the first of the year so God bless me Christmas happy New Year keep knitting those Christmas socks and putting thousands of squares on your blankets. Um, <laughs> and I'll see you the next time I see you. Bye.